Hey everyone, welcome back to our channel. I want to take you along with me this week to show you my non-toxic weekly cleaning routine. So I guess this will be a little bit of a different video, but I did want to go ahead and share this with you all just to give you some ideas if you are looking to transition to a non-toxic cleaning routine for your home. So this video will have some recipes included, but I want to just show you how I keep our home tidy without using any toxic chemicals and things that I'm completely comfortable with my family and any pets being around. I always start off by stripping the bed and going ahead and washing those sheets and later on in this video I'm going to be showing you our recipe for a non-toxic laundry detergent so stick around to the end for that. And here I am just dusting our furniture. I like to avoid furniture polish and anything that might have some harsh chemicals in it and honestly I dust all of our furniture with just a mixture of Castile soap and water with a clean cloth that's wrung out thoroughly. I find that that is perfect for getting up all of that dust and keeping everything nice and tidy. As you can imagine, part of my weekly refresh routine is to give the floors some attention. I always sweep our hard floors with the broom and carpet with the vacuum cleaner to keep everything nice and tidy. Usually my cleaning routine takes a couple hours, but there's always little detours with everything it seems like. And this time it was our shelf falling off of the wall randomly and making a really big mess everywhere with my hanging plant and dirt ending up all over the floor. So this got a little more of a thorough clean than it usually does every week because the couch got swept behind. I don't do that normally every week, but this week it got it. So here I'm just cleaning up that mess before I get back to my weekly routine. Of course, part of a weekly refresh is going to include giving the bathroom a thorough cleaning. So this is where the first recipe comes in and this is for my non-toxic DIY all-purpose cleaner. Now this recipe is over on the blog and also I already have another video on this. So I won't go in huge detail with this, you can jump over to that video or tutorial if you want the full instructions. But basically this cleaner is just a lemon vinegar that I add water, witch hazel, and some essential oils to. And I will use this for every surface in the bathroom, the sink, the toilet, the tub. I will use it for surfaces in the kitchen like the fridge or the stove. I haven't used this on my wooden countertops, but I cannot imagine that the ingredients in this would do them any harm. So basically just any hard surface that you have in your house, this cleaner is perfect for. In the bathroom, I always just spray down my surfaces with the cleaner and then I'll use a damp cloth to go over and just wipe them over really well. And it keeps the bathroom perfectly clean. I've never needed to use another cleaner. However, I do use baking soda quite a bit in the bathroom. I will use baking soda in the toilet bowl as well as down in the sink to give a little bit of abrasiveness to my cleaning to help any grime just come up a little easier. I especially like using this in the bathtub floor where it can just get a little bit grimier if I don't stay really on top of that and so that baking soda with the vinegar cleaner really helps to keep that nice and white and shiny. I'll always just give the rugs a little shake, the ones from the kitchen and the ones from the bathroom. Sometimes I'll put those in the washer, just depends, and then that area of the house is finished up. Moving on to the living room, I go ahead and just dust the furniture, the leather furniture and the wooden furniture with that same Castile soap like I did in the bedroom. Just honestly, I would say about a half tablespoon max of the Castile soap down in a sink bowl of water. And then just wring your washcloth out thoroughly and it works just as well as a furniture polish. Moving on to the living room carpet, I just like to give that a good sweep. And normally on my cleaning day, for some reason the dining room just becomes a catch-all, or I should say our dining table. 
everything just kind of ends up there until I'm ready to clean that area and then I have to go back through and put everything in its place. The old proverb is a place for everything and everything in its place and I find that that really works if everything has a home it's not that hard to get it back in its place but if you have a bunch of items laying around that don't have a home that's when things can really start to get messy so make sure everything has a home and when it's time to clean up make sure everything goes back in its place i always just give the dining table and the dining chairs a good wipe down i of course am doing this throughout the week when we are eating at the table but i like to just make sure that it is cleaned once again when i'm doing my weekly refresh then it's time to just go ahead and vacuum that rug as well. And then finally, I will tackle the kitchen dishes. Usually on my weekly refresh day, I save that for last, but I'm thinking of changing up my routine because I'm always a little done with it by the time I have all of these dishes left to do that have piled up throughout the day. So anyway, I'm just moving on to that pile of dishes and giving the kitchen the normal clean that it would normally get. And a lot of times I'll just use that same all-purpose cleaner to go over the appliances, just to give it a little more of a refresh than it gets on a daily basis. I would encourage you if you are looking into getting into a weekly cleaning routine, but it seems a little daunting, just make a list of the areas that you feel like need attention more so once a week than what they are getting on a daily basis and start there. Give it a try a few weeks and just see how the routine goes for you. If you need to add more things in or if you're finding that you're adding things in that don't really need done every single week, such as maybe cleaning ceiling fans or windows, then go ahead and just modify it for whatever your family's needs are. At the end of the day, the sheets are done, so it's time to go ahead and get the bed made and get that all ready for evening time. Even if I am about to crawl into bed, if it's later than normal when I'm able to get the bed made, I still like to go ahead and make the bed. I feel like there's something so cozy on a weekly refresh day about climbing into a freshly made bed. So the last thing is just to sweep the remaining floors. Most of the time I will mop the floors as well. I didn't get to it this week to include it in the video, but if I mop the floors, I will just use the Castile soap, maybe a little higher ratio of Castile soap to water, and that works fine to keep the floors nice and clean. Finally, moving on to that laundry detergent recipe, I'm just going to grate a half a bar of Fels naphtha and add in two cups of water before transferring that to the stove to dissolve that soap before adding in the next ingredients. While that soap is continuing to dissolve, I go ahead and fill a two gallon bucket about halfway with hot water and that will be ready for one of these next steps. Once the grated Fels naphtha has dissolved in the warm water, I go ahead and add in the washing soda and the borax, and that just needs stirred until it no longer feels gritty in the pan. This will take a few minutes. After that, we're just gonna go ahead and add it into that bucket of water that we already started, and then we're going to go ahead and top that off with more hot water, give it a stir so everything is distributed, and then we're just gonna let this set on the counter either overnight or for 12 to 14 hours until it is solidified. After the waiting period, it should have gelled up really thick, and at that point, you're just gonna use your hand and squish all of that gel up until you have little tiny pieces and it's no longer big chunks of the gel. Then we're just going to go ahead and pour half of that into another two gallon bucket, top both of the buckets off with more hot water, give it a final stir, and this is done. I do have the full instructions over on the blog and we'll be sure to have that linked, but if you are interested in making this, you can make it so cheaply and it is very, very effective for washing your laundry. Well, I hope you found these tips helpful for implementing a non-toxic cleaning routine in your home. And until next week, have a lovely weekend, friends, and I'll see you then.